This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another Wolf Responds. Here we are in the 12th week before the election, counting down. And one of the issues big in this election has to do with medical care. Now, an election ought to be a time when you take a step back, you think about what the big issues are and what the positions of the parties about these issues are. But as happens so often in American elections, and particularly with the presidency, most of the effort of the parties is devoted to saying as little as possible that might get them into difficulty with vague phrases, unclear promises, plausible deniability is the rule, etc., etc. So I want to talk about what the medical care issues really are. Uh, mentioning a little bit why they're ignored so often, why they're not faced. So let's begin. I want to mention to start the four signs that our medical care system is in awful shape, needs radical overhaul because it is failing us. Here are the four. Number one, we have the most expensive medical care in the world. That is, Americans spend more money on their medical care than people in any other advanced industrial country. The others are not even close. We spend somewhere around 17 or 18 percent of our national income on health care. What do I mean by health care? Four industries are included in health care. Doctors, number one. Hospitals, number two. Drug and device makers, number three. And medical insurance companies, number four. Those four industries have gotten together, and together they comprise the medical industrial complex. And it is responsible, closely working together, to make our health care more expensive by a lot than most other countries. Okay? That's the first sign that there's something wrong. Why is it a sign that there's something wrong? Because the medical outcomes of the United States are not that much better than the rest of the world. They're kind of mediocre. For example... Quite a few other countries, people live longer than they do in the United States. Quite a few other countries, they spend fewer days in the hospital per person or per illness. If you look at the usual signs, the United States is in the middle, not, not the worst, but far from the best. Now, if you're just in the middle, but you cost more than everyone else, that's a clue. There's something wrong. Here are the three other signs that I would point you to. One is obvious. It's the pandemic we are living through right now. The United States, to summarize, has a little over four, four and a half percent of the world's population. But we have 25 percent of the world's COVID cases and 25 percent, roughly, of the world's COVID deaths. Four plus percent of the population 25%. We are a rich country. We're supposed to be proud of our medical system. But at 4% of the world's people, getting 25% of the worst illness in a long time doesn't look good. But we're not done. We are also coming off 20 years and counting of what we call in this country the opioid crisis. Hundreds of thousands of people dying because they overuse opioids. <coughs> Excuse me. Something should have been done about that. Something should be done about it now. Something should have been done for years. It's a pharmaceutical disaster. Abuse of the production abuse of the sale, abuse of the distribution, and abuse of all the mechanisms that should have been in play to deal with this problem. 
Big fat failure here again. And finally, the obesity crisis. Americans are among the most obese people on this planet. That's a health issue. The health services ought to have intervened, done something, for example, about processed foods full of sugars and fats that make people overweight. But they don't. The medical industrial complex is very concerned not to disturb an economic system that they have played so successfully, once again, making themselves more money than any other medical system in the world and delivering a mediocre health service to its people. What needs to be done? Well, for starters, we need to have the kind of system that works better at lower cost in, for example, every European country. That's right. We need to learn from others how to do it differently. Most of those others either use a government health insurance system or a mixture of government and private enterprise but the bottom line is to get better health outcomes at a lower price. And that bottom line has succeeded in all of those countries and many more, better than it has in the United States. Of course, the medical industrial complex will yell and scream and shout, oh, we shouldn't be like the Canadians. Really? We shouldn't be like the British or the French or the Germans or the Italians or the Scandinavians. Just because they have a lower price they pay for better health care than we get isn't a reason they want to. They want us to call it socialism. How convenient. Why don't you figure other, use bigger other names that can make people, you hope, not demand what they should have gotten long ago. Yeah, in the bottom line, again, it's capitalism. It's the money-making operation. Of course, these are businesses, the doctors and the hospitals and the drug and device makers and the insurance companies. And you know the name of business. Get the most for the least cost you have. Minimize your costs, cut those corners, and jack up your prices. That's what the business mantra is. And if you make your medical care system a business, which the United States does more than any other country, that's what you get. Mediocre outcomes, overpriced, and a failed response to the coronavirus, to the opioid crisis, and to the obesity crisis. Look, the evidence is hard and clear. Only billions spent on noise, propaganda, every effort to deflect your attention, to tell you horror stories about somebody's failed operation somewhere else, keeps this crooked arrangement going. Don't be fooled. Make demands on all politicians of whatever party to come clean. Do they understand the failures of our system and are they committed to the radical changes needed to overcome them? This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another Wolf responds 12 weeks out from the big election.